there's your toe. And then on those on those Allens, the set screws, uh -huh. it's going into aluminum, so it's like 10 to 12 foot pounds torque. Uh -huh. I was just trying to be careful not to strip anything out when oh, I yeah. did this yesterday, you know? Oh yeah, I don't blame you there. 63 foot pounds to the subframe, 125 foot pounds to all the stuff to the knuckle. I, I had it on jack stands and then I had to put floor jacks underneath the knuckle and then jack it up to compress it, to compress it and then it would definitely be impossible to do this without pulling those pieces off. Oh. How do you adjust the camber on this? It's this so adjust? The yeah, lower arm it, is camber. It'll be camber um, caster. Um, this will be primarily the camber. How much adjustment then, is there? It's just right in, in this bolt? Yep. yep. And then what, it slides? Yep, yeah. How do you know how much it's sliding? Do you loosen it and it can just move and you just have to like tighten no, it down? No, so yeah. you'll loosen one side and you spin this side yeah. and then this cam is egg shape. Oh, so, so it starts to walk it back it. and yep. forth, okay. Yeah, so you just loosen the nut side and then rotate the head side of it got it and then as it rotates it repositions the the cam lobe within this slot and it pitches the arm gotcha down. so here's your your current measurements so, so this is rear yeah so this is all rear so the top numbers are your camber mm -hmm. as it sits and then your toe and then you have your camber on the top mm -hmm. caster in the middle and then your toe on the bottom for the front Gotcha, gotcha. How much how much caster and toe is called for in the front? Uh, on this particular model, I am not sure. Okay. Point oh eight, right? Yes. So, point about half a degree will bring this one out. So we'll tow it out. Okay. And then this one, you're one point one four degrees towed in. So we'll bring that a little over a deg uh, degree out. Okay. So, so, so essentially, that's what I set it up at when I put this stuff on. Correct. And so that's why, if it's doing that, that's probably why it's pulling to one side of the front because the whole rear end is going one direction. Right. So your thrust angle by itself is pushed all the way to the left, which will bring you to... Which it makes sense, it was pulling to the right. So basically your front's trying to go this way and your rear's trying to go that way. <laughs> okay, so just a note to everyone, you need to get a spanner wrench or buy a spanner wrench and bring it to an alignment shop unless you have some kind of specialty performance alignment shop that has performance tools. Because right now, the way that this is happening, he's just explaining, he's basically having to use a pliers with a, a rag to try to prevent it from getting too marred up. How's it doing? Is it getting all mangled or is it okay? Can you kind of see it in there? So you can see where the pliers have been grabbing it. Oh yeah, okay. You can see right along that wrench where it's yeah, yeah. going right through the rag. Gotcha, yeah. We're, we're almost there. Okay, cool, so spinning that, and so normally that spanner wrench would... It, was, it sits in those holes and just spins right around. So, that guy right there. Okay, so we're testing just for fun what the most negative camber you could run on the front stock suspension components, and wh where are we at? Negative 1.6. Negative 1.6 is maxed. Yeah. Let's just run it at negative 1.6 in. And then is that is that number gonna change quite a bit, you think, when you change caster? No. Nope. Okay, so the last part here on the front, he's adjusting toe. He's saying essentially with anything that you adjust, it will affect the other components to some degree. So we're hoping we get the toe within spec and it doesn't throw off the caster and the camber all that much. Or does toe really not affect it too much as long as the steering wheel is straight? Not too much. As long as the steering wheel is being held, everything will go right where it should. So he has a, a little mount in there that's wedged underneath the yoke, holding it straight, and then dialing this in. The goal on the toe is what again? Negative 0.05. straight it does handle surprisingly well for a heavy car when it's set up but on straights it's like nothing nothing competes it pulls away from 700 horsepower at mclaren's porsche gt3 rs there's a real fast driver hard to keep up with and on the straights just that's where i make it up which is always fun You're like oh the straight's coming i'm gonna get them <laughs> you know it'd be nice to be able to keep off them in the corners and just leave them on the straights. Yeah, I think with 305s on all four corners, there's no way I'd be able to fit 305s in the front without that negative mm -hmm. camera. You know, it won't even fit without 
doing like a wide body kit or something. That's it everyone. That is a summary of what I've done over the last couple of days as far as getting suspension on Model S Plaid, unplugged performance, all the rear stuff, waiting on the front upper control arms when we do the install on that. When we go through all the alignment stuff, we'll have another video going through that as well. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Like, comment, subscribe, let us know below what else you want to see. If you have any questions about the suspension, I give you some, some feedback on it. Some of you have asked why I'm parking on this carport thing. Don't you have a garage? Our garage is our full gym. So good for us to have a gym, not so good for the plaid that has to be outside, but at least we have covered parking in this carport. All right, see you next time, over now.